Hi, Assalamualaikum and good day to all students. For this video, we are going to cover for chapter 8 of FST 209, whereby for this particular chapter, uh, the slides, the chapter will cover for the use of palms that is being widely in, uh, that is widely used in food industries. Alright, so now let's begin with chapter 8, palms. Okay, so for this lesson outcome, uh, upon completion for this particular topic, students should be able to describe the importance of palms. They are, uh, they should able to identify and explain on different types of palm, and they are able to explain the factors that influencing the choice of palm. So, which palm to choose in order to transport the fluid from one area to another area, or from lower ground to upper ground. Right, so for this particular pumps, basically it is to displace or to move fluid from one area to another area. So uh, we have several choices, several types of pumps that can be choose. However, the suitability of the pump is uh, directly related to the type of the fluid that is going to be displaced, that is going to be moved, as well as the... Uh, altitude of the fluid to be moved and uh, the uh, length of the fluid to be moved. Alright, so now we move on for the first one, the importance of pump. So what is pump? Pump is the device that is being used to move fluid such as gases or liquids or slurries. And this particular pump, they are used to displace a volume of fluids by physical or mechanical action. When we talk about displacing a volume of fluid, this one is whereby we want to trans uh, transport or we want to transfer the fluid from one area to another area. Okay, pumps, they are mechanical device okay, for supplying energy to a liquid to promote its flow. Okay, because in order for us to um, ensure that the, the fluid of flow, uh, the flow fluid is... Uh, smooth and it is able to reach from one area to another area it requires to have some additional force in order to make sure that the fluid is able to flow okay so this pump it promotes the flow at specific specific flow rate and under desired conditions of transfer all right so that's why it is important to choose the right pump because different pump they will have a they will have an effect towards the changes of the fluid properties. However, one common misconception about pumps is the thought that they create pressure. Okay, pump does not create pressure. The, basically, they only displace a fluid. They only uh, transfer the fluid. However, the action um, of the pump together with the fluid that what causes the different pressure and that what causes the flow of the fluid. Okay, so it does not from the pump alone that create the pressure. Okay, for food industry, fluids of widely differing physical and chemical properties have to be pumped under various process operating conditions. So for example, we have uh, centrifugal pumps as well as positive displacement pumps. Hence, a piping arrangement also need to be designed to minimize energy that is required for pumping. Okay, so for example, it is uh, best to have the same altitude of the piping to be uh, designed. However, if let's say the fluid need to be transported to a higher altitude, then they need to choose the proper pump that is able to uh, deliver that, uh, that kind of capacity. Okay, so we have several types of pump. Okay, the first one is centrifugal pump. For centrifugal pump, this one is a rotodynamic pump that uses a rotating impeller to increase the viscosity, uh, sorry, to increase the velocity of a fluid because this one we want to ensure that the fluid is able to flow. Centrifugal pump are commonly used to move liquid through a piping system. Okay, so how it works. Alright, so for this particular point, this one is the summary of how this particular centrifugal pump works. So basically, the fluid it enters the pump uh, impeller along or near to the rota rotating axis 
and they are being accelerated by the impeller because the impeller it will start to rotate okay this particular impeller it starts to rotate then this particular fluid they will follow the action of impeller okay and the fluid will flow radially outward into a diffuser okay because when the impeller is rotating it will discharge the fluid to the outer part okay so the fluid flowing radially outward into a diffuser of volute chamber from where it exits into the downstream piping system so basically centrifugal pumps are being used to large discharge through smaller heads okay large discharge meaning that we are discharging a large amount of uh, fluid Okay, so for centrifugal pumps, they have two components. So one is impeller, whereby this particular impeller, they are firmly attached to a rotating star, a shaft. Okay, this one you can imagine like a fan, a standing fan. Okay, you have a standing fan like this. And then we have the rotating shaft at the center. And after that, we have the impeller. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Then um, this particular impeller, it will rotate when this particular shaft is rotating. However, if there is a no rotation from this particular shaft, of course, this particular impeller is not going to rotate. Okay, and then um, the, the second component of centrifugal pump, we have this uh, volute shape housing. This particular volute shape housing is something like the snail... Uh, casing okay uh, the shape is like a snail casing whereby it is a casing which enclose the impeller okay we do not want to have um, incidence of the impeller is being uh, is being exposed whereby it will cause contamination to the food uh, to the food material to the liquid material and also this particular casing is where uh, when the fluid flow, it will start to have a different pressure when the fluid starts to flow. Okay, so for this particular impeller, it contains a number of blades and veins. So this one, okay, a set of this blade and veins, this one is called as impeller. But this one is vein or it is also known as a blades. Okay, and they are curved backward. So shaft of the pump, it will rotate by using electric or motor engine. So how does this shaft will start to rotate when you turn on? So there is a, a motor or engine to move the shaft and it starts to rotate. As the shaft rotates, all right, so the impeller, which is affixed to the shaft, this one, okay, this, this veins, a group of veins, this one is known as impeller. Okay, so this particular particular impeller will also rotate when the shaft starts to rotate all right so this is um, the example of how the centrifugal pump uh, is being placed in the food industry so you can see that this one this will be the inlet of a liquid okay and this particular area is the outlet all right so inside here okay this is the volute shape casing Alright, and inside this particular volute shape casing, we have the impeller and we have the shaft. So, can you see that at the center here, you can see this one is uh, the shaft. Alright, and the blades is, is located inside of this particular casing. Alright, then this one is another example. This is a blue uh, centrifugal pump, but this one is single stage radial flow centrifugal pump. So this is um, this is the centrifugal pump. This one is the motor, okay, motor or the engine. All right. So this is where the liquid will starts to flow and it will be discharged at the outer part over here. All right. This one also is another example of radial uh, pump. Okay. This one is the centrifugal pump. Alright, and this one is an example of seal centrifugal pump whereby it is being covered at this particular area and this particular part is sealless centrifugal pump okay, whereby there is a no cover at this particular part. Alright. So for centrifugal pump, it converts the rotational energy into a pressure energy. Okay, so this is uh, the purpose Okay, this is the purpose of centrifugal pump. 
it converts the rotational energy from the impeller into velocity as well as pressure energy. Pressure energy whereby this one is due to the casing, due to the uh, fluid flow and due to the rotation of the impeller. Okay, the fluid to be pumped is taken in at the center of the blade. Okay, the fluid to be pumped will be uh, taken at the center of a bladed rotor and then it is being passed along the spinning rotor. Okay, rotor, this one will be the impeller or the vane or the blade whereby it will acquire energy of rotation. Okay, the fluid will follow the rotation and after it rotates, then it will start to be moved outward. This particular centrifugal pump, they are very extensively used in various industries because this one, it uh, basically they are more robust for centrifugal pump. It can deliver a very large quantities of fluid with high efficiency. Okay, and this particular centrifugal pump, okay, however, it is the most efficient for low viscosity fluid, right? And it can transfer, it, for example, for food products, milk, fruit juice, and also it can be used to pump fluid or liquids that containing solid particles. Okay, for example, it contains uh, uh, some particles inside the beverages, for example, the, uh, uh, the pulp of the fruits inside this particular fruit juice. Okay, however, some of other pumps, they are not able to transfer or to transport liquid which contains solid particles because it will cause damage to the to their impeller or to the system. Okay, for centrifugal pump, it is not suitable for high viscosity fluid, okay, because it will prevent from attaining required velocity by high viscous forces. Okay, high viscous forces due to the movement of the impeller. So, uh, sorry, high viscous forces is due to the high viscosity liquid, all right? And it is um, difficult to be moved by this particular uh, rotating rotor, okay, rotating blade. So how does it work? Okay, so this will be the steps of how the centrifugal pump operates. Okay, this one is the operation of uh, centrifugal pump. Operational procedure. Alright, so this one is the operational principle of centrifugal pump. A centrifugal pump, it works by conversion of the rotational kinetic energy, typically from an electric motor, okay? It convert the rotational kinetic energy. Okay, why it is a rotational? Because the impeller is being rotated from an electric motor or turbine to an increased static fluid pressure. Alright, so this particular action of a centrifugal pump, it is being described by Bernoulli uh, principle. This one we have learned in chapter 7 for the uh, movement of the fluid. Okay, Z1G plus V1 square over 2 plus P1 over rho 1 equals to K, whereby K is the constant, alright? Z is the depth or the height of the fluid to be transferred, okay, depth or height. G, this one is meant for gravitational acceleration. V is the velocity, P is the pressure, rho is the density of the fluid. So the rotation of the pump impeller, Okay, rotation of the impeller, pump impeller, it will impart kinetic energy. It will give kinetic energy to the fluid as it is drawn in. Okay, when the fluid is being um, going towards the inlet of the pump, okay, this particular impeller, it will suck in the water into, suck in the fluid into the pump. Okay, so it will drawn in from the impeller eye, from the center part of the pump and after that the fluid it will follow the movement of the fluid and it will be forced outward through the impeller veins to the periphery of the impeller okay so as the fluid exits the impeller the fluid kinetic uh, the fluid kinetic energy in terms of the velocity is then will be converted to static pressure Okay, it will uh, become slightly static and this will have in terms of changes of pressure due to the change of area, okay, which the fluid experiences in the volute section, okay, the casing. 
in the casing this one it will change the pressure so um, that's why in terms of the casing in terms of the impeller the blade they are playing a bigger role in order to move the fluid okay the liquid velocity it will start to decrease okay liquid velocity decrease due to increasingly larger area in the volute okay volute shape because from the center for example i have this one so from the center the fluid is being going out through this particular rotating impeller and can you see that this particular area is a small area however this volute casing is large area so there is a changes of uh, size of the casing all right so decrease liquid velocity okay when we have a decrease liquid velocity it will decrease the kinetic energy and then it will convert into an increase in pressure okay so the discharging liquid okay so when the liquid is being discharged towards the outlet it will be discharged at higher pressure so typically the volute shape of the pump casing whereby it will increase the volume of the fluid or the diffuser veins which serve to slow down the fluid and converting to kinetic energy in order to flow to work are responsible for the energy conversion so what are the factors that are responsible for energy conversion one is the volute shape okay because from small area it becomes to larger area uh, and then we have the diffuser veins okay whereby this particular diffuser vein it will slow down the fluid and it will convert from kinetic energy uh, it will convert to kinetic energy in order to um, ensure that the fluid is being flowed all right so the energy conversion it will result in an increased pressure of the on the downstream side of the pump which it will cause the fluid to flow okay flow rate through a centrifugal pump are being controlled by a valve installed in the pipe and connected to the discharge end of the pump to regulate the flow rate okay so you can see that this particular diagram okay this diagram it shows that this one is the eye the impeller eye whereby the fluid will starts to flow inward into this particular impeller can you see that this one is impeller and each part each blade this one is a vein okay this is a veins so when the fluid going out okay from the inlet it moves into this impeller then the impeller starts to rotate so the flow of the fluid it will starts to move okay and then after that it will be discharged radially meaning that it will be displaced uh, to the outside part of the volute casing so can you see that part, this particular area and this particular area is it has a different they have different size a uh, different area different size of area okay one is smaller and the other one is larger so that's why they will have a difference in terms of the pressure okay so the fluid flow okay when it is being discharged outward radially so after that it will have a different uh, pressure and from there it will start to be discharged at the outlet area at higher pressure so the main purpose of this particular pump is to raise the pressure of liquid so it will move from suction to discharge Okay, this is where it will suction this area and then this area will be the area where the liquid will be discharged then we have multi-stage centrifugal pump so for multi-stage centrifugal pump a centrifugal pump which contains two or more impeller is called a multi-stage centrifugal pump the impellers may be mounted on the shafts or different shafts okay it can be from the same shaft and it has two sets of uh, impeller or it can be stacked on a different shaft and it will have uh, different sets of veins okay so a multi-stage centrifugal pump has the following two important function one is to produce high heat high heat meaning that they are able to discharge the fluid to a higher altitude compared to single stage of centrifugal pump okay and then second to discharge a large quantity of fluid and if high heat is to be developed for example you want to transfer uh, transfer the fluid from a lower ground to a higher altitude 
then normally they will use this multi-stage centrifugal pump. Okay, so if high head is to be developed, then the impellers are going to be mounted on the same, same shaft. Okay, mounted on the same shaft, this one is known as series. While if let's say it is for a large quantity of discharge of fluid, then the impeller are mounted on different shafts. Okay, it should be in parallel. So this is the example whereby uh, the pump is connected in series whereby it only has a uh, one uh, shaft okay and then this one is parallel whereby it is being mounted in different shafts okay this one is to uh, transfer for large volume of uh, fluid and this one is to transfer to a higher altitude okay so this is how it is being mounted okay this pump is being mounted so we have one and we have another one of centrifugal pump so it is known as multi-stage centrifugal pump okay so this one is how it works whereby this particular centrifugal pump we have one two three four five six and seven over here okay this one is being used in in the industry to transfer to a higher altitude okay now what is impeller impeller is a rotating comp component of a centrifugal pump usually made of iron or it can be made from steel, aluminium or even plastic which transfers energy from the motor that drives the pump to the fluid being pumped by accelerating the fluid outwards from the center of the rotation. So the velocity of the fluid is being achieved by the impeller transfers into the pressure okay, when the outward movement of the fluid is being confined by the pump casing. So the impellers are usually a short cylinder with an open inlet whereby it is known as the eye, okay, the center part of the uh, impeller to accept incoming fluid. Okay, and then we have veins to push the fluid radially okay, and a spleen center to accept a drive shaft. Okay, drive shaft, this one is to hold the shaft and the shaft is holding the uh, impeller. Alright, so this is how it looks like for the impeller. Okay, we have several sets of impeller. One is a uh, closed casing and the other, uh, the rest are, um, is not sealed. Okay, one is, uh, some are sealed, some are sealless. Okay, so this is the various type of impeller. Alright, so now what is the problem in centrifugal pump? For centrifugal pump, we have a problem in terms of cavitation. Okay, so cavitation, what is cavitation? Cavitation is being defined as a phenomenon of formation of vapor bubbles okay, of the flowing liquid in a region where the pressure of the liquid falls below the vapor pressure. Okay, so cavitation normally is being divided into two classes of behavior. One is inertial or, non, or transient uh, cavitation and the other one is a non-inertial cavitation. Okay, for inertial cavitation, the process where a void or a bubble in a liquid rapidly collapse. Okay, so what happened here is that um, during the fluid flow, uh, if let's say the pump is not working steadily, so there will be a chances of production of bubbles okay, during the fluid flow. So when we have, for example, we have this uh, piping, Okay, and then the flow of uh, the product, okay, the fruit juice, and then there will be a formation of bubbles. And this particular bubbles, when it is formed, after that it collapse. Okay, it forms and then after that it collapse. So when uh, it rapidly formation and collapse, it will produce a shock wave. Okay, so this particular cavitation normally they are occur in palms, propellers, impellers, and also the vascular tissues of plants. Alright, now we move on to non-inertial cavitation. Non-inertial cavitation is the process in which a bubble in a fluid is forced to oscillate in the size or shape due to the some form of energy input, such as uh, acoustic field. Okay, for example, we have uh, uh, supposing for the fluid it will move like this. Okay, the size is similar, but then because of the uh, some forces, okay, some forces, then this particular fluid 
it will a force to oscillate to the size uh, or shape due to some energy input okay such as acoustic field so this particular cavitation is often employed in ultrasonic cleaning bath okay ultrasonic cleaning bath and also can be observed in pumps as well as propellers so the application for the centrifugal pump uh, it varies in different industries so for food industries this one is widely used in sugar refining in bleaching sugar bleaching as well as a disinfection of uh, uh, piping okay so, uh, sanitary uh, disinfection and then for wastewater or chemicals this one involving with the purifying water the odorizing sewage as well as industrial effluents for the agriculture industry it is for fertilizer, fungicide, insecticide manufacturing. For textile, it is for bleaching of fabrics as well as silks. For pulp and paper industry, okay, it is for bleaching the pulp, fireproofing as well as food preserving. Alright, now let's move on to another type of pump which is piston pump. Okay, the basic piston pump is very simple whereby it has it have two valve and one stuffing uh, one stuffing box okay two valve and one stuffing box okay this particular box is to contain this particular two valve in this particular example the reciprocating piston reciprocating meaning that it goes uh, back and forth uh, continuously okay is driven the piston okay this particular piston is known as reciprocating piston is driven back and forth by a rotating mechanism okay this piston pump it use suction to raise a water into the chamber okay the lower valve can be placed below water level All right the piston pump must be within 25 feet of the water level but the water can then be raised quite high an axial piston pump is a positive displacement pump. Okay, see here. Axial piston pump is a positive displacement pump that has a number of pistons in a circular array within a cylinder block. It can be used as a standalone pump, a hydraulic motor, or an automatic air conditioning compressor. Okay, so now this is how the piston pump looks like. So this is the rotating shaft. Okay, this is the cam rotating shaft. Alright, so this particular rotating uh, cam rotating shaft, this one is to move this particular piston. Okay, this one is known as piston. Okay, so whenever the piston is moving backward, when the piston moving backward, Okay, when the piston moving backward, did you notice that this particular area, okay, it is a being going up, okay, meaning that this particular valve, okay, this one is the valve, this particular valve is opening, so the liquid will be transferred to the, this area, okay, to this chamber, this one is the chamber. Okay, when it goes up, when it opens, when the piston pump, piston pump moving backward, this particular valve will open and the liquid will be going into this particular chamber. However, when the piston pump moving forward, okay, this particular valve will close, okay, it will go down and this particular valve will open and it will allow the liquid to be discharged to the higher level. Alright, this one is due to the different pressure created by the piston, by the movement of the piston. So, when the piston moving backward, okay, this particular area, this particular chamber having low pressure, okay, low pressure when it moving backward. So the liquid over here, it having high pressure. So what happened is that uh, fluid from high pressure, they will be going to the lower uh, pressure. So that's why this particular valve is being opened. So the liquid will rush into this particular chamber. However, when the piston moving forward, this particular pressure, at this particular area, the pressure become high pressure. Okay, it's no longer uh, low pressure because it contains with a lot of uh, liquid. So this particular valve at the bottom valve it will close. However, the top valve, okay, 
it will open and this particular pressure at this area is having low pressure. So again, the same principle uh, is being applied. When this particular chamber having this particular chamber having high pressure, the top part of the valve is having low pressure, so the liquid will rush to go upward. Okay, so there will be a, a relationship between the size of the area as well as the pressure of the area. All right, so this one it shows the example of piston pump. Okay, how the pump is uh, it uh, it it looks like, right? And then we have this air operated high pressure piston pump, or also known as a Rizzetto high pressure technology. So it, the advantages of this high pressure piston pump, it can works up until five thousand bar. Okay, it has low noise level even at high cycling speed, meaning that the a movement of back and forth of the piston at a high level but then is still having low noise no mechanical pilot valve and it is proven to be reliable under severe condition it is a modular robust as well as it having a modern design easy to change the ratio of the pump for example when you want to have a, a bigger area so uh, you can uh, change the area, change the, the size of the chamber, easy to convert a pump for single, from single to double acting, okay, it can convert the pump from single to double acting pump, lightweight eye cycling spool and it is easily to maintain. Alright, so um, this particular reciprocating piston pump, so how it works, okay, this one is the operational principle. The basic principle of reciprocating single piston pump is shown in the previous diagram that I have shown you just now. So the piston, it will expel, it will discharge the liquid through a one-way valve, okay, whereby this particular valve is known as check valve. The pumping rate normally is being adjusted by controlling the distance, okay, the distance of piston retracts. Thus, it will limit the amount of liquid pushed out by each stroke. Or by the cam rotating speed. Okay, the schematic of the reciprocating single piston pump is shown just now. So cam, okay, cam rotating speed is a push is a is pushing the sapphire piston back and forth. So when the piston is moving backward, okay, this is how what I have explained just now. When the piston is moving backward, it will suck the eluent through the inlet check valve at the bottom. Okay, when it moving backward, uh, it will suck the eluent into the inlet check valve at the bottom. Then the sapphire ball will be lifted. This one will be the check valve and it will open the path for the eluent to enter into the chamber. Okay, but then when the piston move forward, okay, piston it moves forward, the liquid will push the inlet ball down and closes the path but the outlet ball will be lifted and opens the outlet valve okay, at the upper part. So the main disadvantage of this type of pump is sinusoidal pressure pulsation which lead to the necessity of the using of pulse damper. Okay, so this is a, a how it, this one is the uh, parts of the pump, piston pump. So we have this cam rotating shaft. And then we have this particular piston that is moving forward and backward. Alright, this one is the sapphire ball. Okay, this is the bottom check valve. Over here is the bottom check valve. This one is the upper check valve. And this particular chamber is where the water or the liquid will be sucked into and it will be discharged at the uh, top part of the check valve. Okay, and then we have another problem for the piston pump. It has the risk of leakage between the piston and the cylinder, which it will reduce the pump efficiency. So somehow you will you will see there is a water dripping uh, from this piston pump because there is some leakage. Okay, well maintained reciprocating pump, it will deliver almost ninety five percent of the fluid that is uh, being uh, being flown. Now we move on to dual piston pump whereby this one is a more efficient way to provide a constant and almost pulse free flow the, the use of dual headed reciprocating pump 
Okay, both pump chambers are driven by the same motor through a common electric, uh, eccentric cam. And this common drive also allows one piston to pump while the other is refilling. As a result, the two flow profiles will overlap each other significantly and it will reduce the pulsation downstream of the pump. Okay, since the acceleration and deceleration profile is somewhat, somehow not linear, so more efficient types of this pump are using eccentricity shaped cams to obtain the best overlapping of the pressure curves and to obtain a smooth flow. Okay, so this one is how it looks like when the cam is a rotating. Okay, the piston will, this particular piston, these two piston, one is moving forward, the other one is moving backward. Okay, when this moving forward, this particular area is discharging the liquid to the up, upper part okay whereby when this piston pump this one is a, the first one this one is the second one so when the second piston is moving backward this particular chamber is refilling okay it refills in this particular chamber so this particular dual piston pump uh, it is uh, best to have uh, to ensure that the fluid is flowing continuously okay because one is discharging, one is refilling. So when this one rotates and this particular, uh, uh, the first piston moving backward, uh, this particular piston, the second piston will be moving forward. So this one will discharge, this one will refill. For dual piston pump, the advantage of dual piston pump, this pump or the unlimited solvent reservoir allowing long-term unattended use and quick changeover as well as the clean-out capability. However, unless special care has been exercised in the manufacture, this pump also may contain, may have several disadvantages whereby it has the tendency for the incompletely compensated pulsation to be observed at high refractive index detector sensitivities, especially at low flow rates where piston cycles are widely spread and since each head has two check valve. Pump reliability will depending on the cleanliness of the mobile phase and continued sealing capability of four check valve on each cycle, which cycle normally occurring several times per minute. Okay, now we move on to the uh, another type of pump, whereby this one is known as rotary positive displacement pumps, gear pumps. Okay, for this gear pump, it is most widely used for rotary positive displacement pump. The fluid is being drawn into the pump and then forced through the outlet. The fluid is being enmeshed in rotating gears and forced through the pump. Okay, so this particular gear pump, they will develop high pressure heat but they cannot tolerate blockage in discharge. Meaning that this particular pump, they cannot tolerate with fluid that contains small particles because it can create blockage. Okay, so this is how it looks like for the uh, gear pump, external gear pump, whereby this one, we have the drive gear. This is where the suction port for the liquid. Okay, and then we have this idle gear. So can you see we have two gears? One is this one and the other one is this one. Okay, then we have these bushings, pressure port and mounting flange and this is the drive shaft to rotate this particular gear. Okay, this one to rotate this particular gear. Okay, so this is how the gear pump works whereby the fluid will be flowing to this, into this particular area and it will move radially okay, and then it will discharge to, this, uh, to the other area. Okay, do you, at this particular time, uh, at this particular uh, area, the fluid will be unmatched. Okay, um, it will have a slight change towards the uh, fluid properties. And after that, it will be discharged at this particular area. Okay, so now this one it shows for the external and internal gear pump. So we have two types of gear pump. One is external and the other one is internal gear pump design. So for the external gear pump design, this one is meant for the uh, hydraulic power application whereby can you see that the fluid flowing and they are being separated at the bottom part and at the top part and at the end they will be discharged at the same outlet. 
Okay, and then we have this internal gear whereby it is known as Giroto pump design. This one is meant to move the automotive oil pump. Okay, and then we have this internal gear, uh, Giroto pump design for high viscosity fluid. Okay, for gear pump, it can tolerate with high viscosity fluid but not with uh, small particles that contain inside that particular fluid. Okay. So for gear pump, basically they are uses the meshing of gears to pump